What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. But today we're gonna to do a follow-up video on the stud.io or studio uh, software program. We did a tutorial, man, it's been probably 10 months now or so since we did the first one, which was a more of a beginner tutorial. Uh, but today is gonna to be 10 tips and tricks for Bricklink Studio that you should know when you are designing your own Lego creations. So let's dive on in. Okay, so let's start off with number one. Number one is check issues. Okay, so when you open up Studio and you're building along, and let's say you're using colors that aren't normally found in a lot of pieces, or you're building with a lot of different pieces, the last thing you wanna run into is an issue where there's a piece that you can't use or that doesn't exist. So what you need to do is turn on check issues, which is right down here in the bottom right. By clicking this, when you turn a piece, a color that does not exist, it's gonna show up here on the right and let you know that that is an issue in your build. It can also alert you to other ongoing issues, but for the most part, it's gonna be whenever you select a color that doesn't exist. And it allows you to then click that piece, you can hide it, you can delete it, um, and it gives you full flexibility as far as removing that piece or fixing it and changing it to a color that actually does exist. So make sure you have check issues turned on. So that's tip number one. Let's move on to tip number two. Number two is really important because it allows you to check prices while you're building um, so that you're not bombarded at the end with a super high price for your build. It also allows you to hide bricks that are expensive so you don't use them in the future. So what do I mean by that exactly? Well, if you look over in the left-hand panel, there, for example, there are three different jumper plates and if you grab them all, put them on the board, you'll notice that each one is priced differently. So for example, this one is about 18 cents, uh, this one is about 5 cents, and then this one is almost 35 cents. So this one is by far the most expensive guy. If I wanna make sure that I don't use this in the future to save money, then I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. And the way that I do this, go over here, right click, and go to hide. And that will remove it from the palette over here so in the future you don't use it and you stick to the cheaper ones. So hopefully number two saves you some money. Let's move on to number three. So number three is really cool because it stops you from using colors that don't exist or that Lego hasn't actually created yet. Fortunately, Studio made it really easy to hide unavailable colors. All you do is you come up to the color palette up here on the right, do the drop down, and then down here it says hide unavailable colors, so make sure that is selected. When you select that and you grab a piece, for example, um, and then when you go back to change the color, it'll show you only ones that are available. And it kind of shows you the price range here on the right as well. Now, moving on to number four. So number four is a really cool tool and it allows you to choose bricks of all the same color. So what's awesome about this particular tool is if let's say you're doing a really big build and you need to single out a certain color because you just want to change the way that, that color looks throughout the entire build. So for example, maybe I want this building to be white instead of tan. Um, so what you could do is go up here to the select tool and you do by color. You select one of the tan bricks, come over here and change it to white. And now, just like that, my building is white. It's changed all the tan bricks to white. So number four is a very helpful tool. Let's move on to number five, which is another helpful tool and very similar to number four. So number five takes the number four tool and builds upon it and allows you to do even more. So using the same building as an example, this tool builds upon the tool that I just showed you. It's under the exact same place, but let's say that you wanted to do just a certain type of brick and a certain type of color. So you do by type and color right here. And let's say that we just wanna change these O tiles on the top. So I click these and maybe we wanna do them in uh, light gray. And as you can see, it has changed. Moving on to number six. Okay, number six is a quick and easy tip. It's just how to spin bricks so you can better see what you're using to build in case you can't really tell what it is on the left-hand side of the pane. Okay, so number six is an awesome little trick and it's super quick and easy. Let's say you're going through your brick palette here on the left and you're not sure uh, maybe what a brick looks like all the way around. For example, you wanna double check this one. If you right click and spin with your mouse, you can get a better idea of the brick itself. So instead of just seeing one view, you can actually change the view and spin the bricks to see what they look like before you place them in your model. Now, it's time for number seven, which is one of my favorite tricks. 
Number seven I use all the time because it allows you to build on plates and tiles with no studs. Okay, so I use this trick all the time. Let's say you're building a vehicle, you have something that requires the back to open and you're gonna put a hinge in, but you don't necessarily know where the hinge is gonna go yet. And you wanna keep building upwards until you can get to the hinge point. And let's say that you have a um, plate right here on whatever it is you're trying to build and you'd like to put another plate excuse me you have a tile right here and you'd like to put another plate on top but obviously studio isn't going to let you do that because there are no studs on top of the tile well that's an issue isn't it so what you can do is remove the tile place the plate where you'd like it to go add another one come back change to the select tool which you can do by clicking v or just come up here and click select delete out the middle one put back your tile and then now you can add a hinge for example let's say you wanted to do like a thin one um, so now if this was a real build you would have a working hinge because this tile here basically not be connected to this part. So these would now hinge, which if I can show you, let's see, see? So now you have a working hinge. Whereas before it wouldn't have let you build here. Okay, so with number seven in the bag, let's move on to number eight. Number eight is an important one because it saves your computer from over-processing or heating up and sometimes actually crashing from too much processing uh, due to the app. So the next trick is really important if you're working with big models or ones that have a lot of complex elements. And using this as an example, there's two buildings here. If I wanted to create a city, but I didn't want to use a lot of processing power on my computer, what you can do is actually import these. As you'll see, the entire thing highlights rather than one individual brick. That's because these are imported models into this untitled document. Uh, the way to do that is to go to File, Import, Import Model, and you can go through your models and import the ones you'd like to add. So if you're building a big city or a skyline, it's better to do it this way so your computer doesn't, doesn't crash. It just saves your computer from a lot of the processing power. So hopefully this helps you and keeps your computer cool and allows you to keep working at a fast pace without it slowing down. Um, let's go ahead and move on to number nine, which is our second to last tip. Number nine is a tool completely centered around compatibility. Okay, this next trick is really cool and it'll probably save you endless hours scrolling. So let's say you're building a vehicle or you are building something with windows you need to find the exact part that matches the piece that it goes to. For example, let's say you're building something you need to put wheels on, right? So you have your wheel here. Which tire do you use? Well, instead of going over here and typing in tires and going through all of the different options and seeing which one fits, which one doesn't, what you can do is just click on it, come down here to find compatible bricks, and it will pull up options for you. So here's a tire and look, it fits perfect. And you go over here, as you see, it's highlighted. There's an issue, that's because it's not black. So we change that and then now it's good to go to add to the vehicle. And now it's time for the last trick of the day, number 10. Number 10 is essentially resetting the playing field or resetting the base for which you build upon. Okay, and the last trick for today's top 10 Let's say you have a build and you're having an issue with the renders where things are floating or you can't get things to come back down to the base level. There's a few different ways around this. It's likely there's something in your model that is anchoring the floor to the base of the model. So if you look, the mailbox right now is dragging everything down. Great way to do this is just pick this item up, move it, and it'll reset everything. Sometimes the tires can do this. If you notice, this tire is squared off, but sometimes they come on at a diagonal, so you just have to hinge it back to normal. And then other times, there's just a small little part or piece that might be flexed or, or in the way. It'll move everything down. If you still can't figure it out, you can reset the entire model by highlighting everything, picking everything up and moving it around, and then the base layer or the, the floor, if you will, will reset and come back up to the model height. 
And that's it. I hope you guys really enjoyed the tips and tricks and found something helpful for your own builds. Um, again, if you haven't already, be sure to check out the video that we did several months ago, which is stud.io or studio for beginners. It's a free software that you can download on BrickLink.com, which I'll link down in the description below. And as a reminder, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. It also really helps if you like, share, and comment. Um, we really appreciate all the feedback and support that we get. And we couldn't do it without all of you guys. So thanks again, and we'll see you on the next video.